Hi guys, and welcome back to another watch review blog video review. You may have noticed a slowdown in video reviews from us. That's because we've just moved into a brand new office. You can expect some background changes to come in the next couple of months as we set up in our new environment. Today's review is a particularly special one. That's because I'm reviewing a watch I've been wanting for years. My ultimate grail watch. The Rolex Cosmograph Daytona 116500 with black dial and stainless steel. Yes, yes. I was originally after the white dial, but beggars can't be choosers when buying a stainless steel Daytona from the Rolex AD. And truth be told, after wearing this nearly every day for the last four months, I much prefer the black dial for a variety of reasons. Before we race into the review, I just want to give a huge thanks to the team over at Royale der Versailles in Toronto. They've allowed me to acquire this coveted watch even during a period of extreme demand. If you're in the area, I highly recommend dropping into the store and having a look at the vast selection of watch brands. As many of you already know, the Daytona in steel is the number one most coveted sports watch, Rolex, or just watch in general, in the world. It has one of the most amazing chronograph movements in the world, not only technologically, but also historically in a package that only one can describe as horological perfection. When it comes to machine or mass-produced sports watches, that is. The collectability in any one of its variations is through the roof, and I have my favorite example here. The 116500 rocking the latest 3140 Rolex in-house movement. There's only so much that can be portrayed through the lens and with words. But I will say here that after handling upwards of 600 different watches from a multitude of brands, the Daytona has nailed every single aspect a casual watch wearer to a seasoned enthusiast wants. Starting with the obvious, the look of this watch is eternally classic. Being able to be worn with nearly any outfit from casual to formal, it walks a tight line between sporty and dressy in a way I've never seen in my life. One thing I noticed when I first picked it up, brand new, from the AD, was its polished sheen. On the case, bracelet, and even down to the indices and subdials that play harmoniously together. It caught me off guard. But even more interestingly was its very slight change in appearance after wearing it for a couple of months and obtaining very light micro scratches evenly all over the watch. The Daytona ages gracefully and looks better with use appearing ever so slightly more rugged than blingy. Just like a fresh barber jacket building patina. This is a true sign of a good watch and one that is built to last a lifetime and suitable as a family heirloom to be passed down throughout generations. As the owner of a Submariner and Air King, while also fantastic pieces, they don't live up to the clout of the Daytona's perfect 10 on 10 design execution. Here's just a few aspects of the Daytona that have been nailed by Rolex. The size, the tapering of the bracelet meeting the slender lugs, the case shape retaining that of older Daytona generations, the bezel width combined with a perfect dial size allowing for immaculate visual proportions, and finally a big selling feature the very slim case thickness that essentially any other chronograph of this caliber can't seem to compete with including the Omega Speedmaster. Needless to say, the watch wears slim on the wrist with an incredible chronograph movement and 72 hours of power reserve. Where else can you find this? Add on the fact that the 116500 has water resistance suitable for diving. Guys, I think it's obvious why the demand for a Daytona is through the roof. The value that you get far exceeds the retail price that Rolex asks for. Cue the grey market bumping up its price to meet the true value. The Daytona is the perfect everyday wear and also perfect special occasion watch. Does that make any sense? No. That's because the Daytona is one of a kind. Here's a couple more interesting aspects I've picked up on since wearing this bad boy that are kind of neutral in stance. I'm more conscious of my wrist when wearing it due to its value and recognizability. It's not that it's big and showy, but more that the shape of the watch is so obviously a Daytona that anyone in the know will not miss it on your wrist. This can be fun as it sparks up watch enthusiast conversations, but at times it can bring some unwanted attention. How did you get that? Is usually one of the more common questions. As you can see, I have the black dial here, which kind of blends more into the black bezel than the highly contrasting white dial against black bezel. The bezel on the 116500 has a pitch black inky look, a little more reminiscent of the vintage Bakelite bezels than the glossy look found on the new Submariners and GMTs. 
The silver subdials are absolutely gorgeous on this reference and catch the light more than the black subdials on the white dial variant. The intricate circular ridging is fascinating to look at. I'd say that the black dial 116500 I have here is probably a touch more subdued than the white dial. And if you have a choice between the two colors, you might want to decide based on your current collection and your ratio of white to black dials you already have. You absolutely cannot go wrong with either choice. I can write an ever-evolving novel about this watch, so I'll stop myself here. But if you do want more information and the full acquisition story behind my purchase, visit our website at watchreviewblog.com. Also, don't forget to visit our watch accessories store at watchpodcases.com, where you can purchase our custom-designed travel cases and watch display solutions. Until next time, cheers!